I, I'm, I'm very pleased, uh, and I want to thank Christina Oyerland uh, for the organization of this uh, seminar. And particularly, I want to welcome uh, the participants, our liberal friends and speakers uh, from uh, Russia. Uh, this time, this afternoon, uh, and that is the uh, purpose of this seminar, we want to discuss the prospects and challenges for the modernization uh, of Russia. And I think that you shall understand that this seminar uh, confirms that uh, the, our group, the Alliance for Liberal and Democrats for Europe, uh, remains a leading supporter of a different Russia and uh, a better uh, Russia. Um, Russia will always be an important neighbor, a strategic partner uh, in a number of crucial uh, uh, areas, uh, all of which are of great concern. And I think it's obvious that we do have a set of common interests, interests that makes our cooperation between Europe and Russia a must. But let me also be clear, we, we do have uh, some divergent views on quite a few issues as well. Uh, for example, values that form the basis uh, for our cooperation are too often undermined uh, today. And also, we shall not be silent when uh, violations of human rights and the rule of law are commonplace uh, today. Uh, our commitment is to the Russian people who deserve better. And the European Union, I think, as a friend and also as a partner, is obliged to remind the Russian authorities that, in fact, a, a true partnership, a true partnership with the European Union can only be built and based if we agree to a set of rules and then stick to them, what is not the case today. Council of Europe, OSCE, WTO membership entails a number of obligations for a serious international player that Russia aspires to be meeting international commitments is, I think, paramount. And that is what makes a partnership reliable and or strategic. And, and, and this is the Russian Federation we would like uh, to see in the near future. And we have to underline it and to recognize it. Today, we are not there. I think that President Medvedev is right that the Russian economy and society requires urgent action for modernization. And the modernization that President Medvedev has launched must be welcome, but its success must also be judged on results and not only on slogans. Surely, I should say that the decision not to change two clocks twice a year to adjust to summertime across Russia can, in all point of view, not be considered as the sole result of modernization. The authorities would be well advised to pursue in our uh, point of view, a more liberal, a much more liberal agenda. And this means, in our point of view, more liberalization, true competition, guarantees for political freedoms, clear distinction between oligarchs and politicians, and, and more importantly, the rule of law uh, in general. And we think that modernization will only be successful if this agenda is uh, a liberal agenda is first put uh, into practice. Building on the current flawed economic and political system will, in our point of view, lead to nothing. Politaskoya, Khodorovsky, Lebedev, these cases remind us of Soviet Russia, not the modern Russia we would like to see as a neighbor. And uh, only this week, a European journalist was denied entry into Russia. So, 2011, uh, 11 is, uh, 2011 is uh, going to be a year of change for the neighbors of the European Union, Belarus, Tunisia, Egypt. But I think it's also a crucial year for the Russian Federation. Forthcoming uh, elections, parliamentary elections, presidential elections are going to be watched with great attention here in Europe and around the world. And um, I can tell you that the, the European Parliament uh, has initiated the first across-the-board political contacts so as to ensure we are prepared uh, to offer a timely and proactive reaction uh, to the events in Russia leading up uh, to these uh, elections. 
And also next week, uh, I can tell you again on the initiative of ALDE, the European Parliament will adopt a resolution on the rule of law uh, in the Russian uh, Federation, because we thought it was absolutely necessary to tackle this problem and not to be silent in uh, the European Parliament on this uh, issue. And uh, this uh, resolution, of this resolution, will be a timely input to the forthcoming visit also of the Prime Minister Putin in Brussels uh, later uh, this month. And that's the reason we are tackling this resolution now and not uh, afterwards. Relations between the European Union and Russia, unlike those between Russia and the USA, do not uh, require, I think, a reset. What it does require is more honesty, honesty on both sides. And this seminar gathers representative of the main opposition parties in Russia. Uh, they do have the, I think, the vision necessary to change uh, Russia. And I'm very grateful for your presence here today. And I'm also eager to, to, to your views and discuss ways and means of how we can succeed in building for the future a better, a different, uh, and in our point of view, a more liberal uh, Russia. So thank you for our presence, and I give immediately uh, the floor uh, to Christia Oyland, who uh, is, as you know, the porte-parole, as we say, of our group on the relations between the European Union and Russia.